Hello everyone. In this INR number 61, we are going to discuss another important topic, which is myasthenia gravis, right? So what is myasthenia gravis? Myasthenia gravis is a most common, remember it is a most common neuromuscular junction disorder, right? So neuromuscular junction will be affected. So this is the most common neuromuscular junction disorder. Who will be affected? This is an autoimmune disorder. This is an autoimmune disorder. So remember autoimmunity is usually commonly seen in females, right? And that will be reproductive age group 30 to 40 years. This is true for nearly majority of the autoimmune disorder. Commonly they will involve females in their reproductive age group 30 to 40 years, right? So what happens in this autoimmune disorder? Autoantibodies are formed, right? Autoantibodies are formed against what? They are formed against post synaptic acetylcholine receptor. So now this is very important post synaptic remember this word is very important and catchy post synaptic see normally when you will see the neuromuscular junction acetylcholine they will combine with acetylcholine receptor and muscle will be having neural transmission this is what you will see in the normal condition but what happened in myasthenia gravis there is a impairment or there is a decreased neuromuscular transmission so why because receptors are blocked by antibody because it is autoimmune disorder so antibodies are blocking these receptors so post synaptic remember what we are learning post synaptic acetylcholine receptor disorder so antibodies are blocking the acetylcholine receptor and that is why there is a reduced transmission in the myasthenia that is why they will have muscle weakness and what is characteristic of this muscle weakness they will be having fluctuating muscle weakness and fatigability remember why i am saying fluctuability because when day will pass right as day progresses this will worsen towards the end of the day right so when they will take the rest that muscle weakness will be relieved remember when they will take the rest muscle weakness will be relieved but when you are they are working so it will be getting worse in day uh, in in a day so as you can see from the morning sunrise and you check to the sunset right so muscle weakness will be more that is what i wanted to show you by this image right so normal muscle muscle weakness which shows that fluctuating muscle weakness and fatigability which is it is getting worsened towards the end of the day and it will be relieved by taking the rest right this is one of the common controversial question to whom they are commonly associated thymic hyperplasia or thymoma and this is a neat pg and fmg question also so myasthenia gravis is most commonly associated with thymic hyperplasia this is the line of harrison latest edition 21st edition on page number 3510 if you want to check you can confirm it so they are commonly associated with thymic hyperplasia in comparison to thymoma right there are two things which you have to uh, concern in the uh, myasthenia gravis it can be ocular or it can be generalized myasthenia in ocular generalized uh, uh, sorry in ocular myasthenia gravis you will see ptosis and diplopia ptosis means droopy upper eyelid right so you can see droopy upper eyelid this is called ptosis and diplopia means double vision so you can see double vision will be present right so in case of generalized myasthenia gravis when there is a general muscle involvement they will have bulbar facial and respiratory muscle weakness bulbar because of bulbar muscle involvement they will have dysarthria dysphagia and fatigable chewing right and facial they will be having expressionless there will be no expression on the face because facial muscles are getting weaker respiratory muscle they will be having difficulty in breathing breathing difficulty will be there so that is the generalized myasthenia gravis how you can diagnose myasthenia gravis remember for diagnosis of myasthenia gravis we are going to use following these things right there are five things repetitive nerve stimulation test number one second is single fiber electromyography third is tensilon test fourth is ice pack test and fifth is immunologic test right sometimes we do this also for ct mri for the ruling out the uh, ocular or cranial myasthenia gravis right so these are the six important tests we can say for the diagnosis of the myasthenia so what is repetitive nerve stimulation what examiner can ask you this is the line of harrison right so when we are doing repetitive nerve stimulation repetitive nerve stimulation you can see normal subject compound muscle action potential compound muscle action potential you can see it is looking stable and normal right but in case of myasthenia gravis because of the post synaptic damage you can see post synaptic damage because of this you can see compound action potential is getting decreased so compound action muscle action potential compound muscle action potential amplitude will be decreased by how much that is important more than 10 percent 
सो मोर देन टेन परसेंट ऑफ डिक्रीमेंट इन द कंपाउंड मसल एक्शन पोटेंशियल राइट एट थ्री हर्ट्स विल बी डायग्नोस्टिक फॉर द माइस्थीनिया ग्राविस तो दिस इज कॉल्ड रेपिटेटिव नर्व स्टिमुलेशन टेस्ट सिंगल फाइबर इलेक्ट्रोमायोग्राफी इन सिंगल फाइबर इलेक्ट्रोमायोग्राफी वॉट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर दिस इज द मोस्ट सेंसिटिव डायग्नोस्टिक टेस्ट फॉर द माइस्थीनिया ग्रेविस बट रिमेंबर इट इज कन्फर्मेटरी बट नॉट स्पेसिफिक दिस इज द लाइन ऑफ हेरिसन इट इज कन्फर्मेटरी बट नॉन स्पेसिफिक दिस इज द लाइन ऑफ हेरिसन एट पेज नंबर थ्री फाइव वन वन राइट सो दैट इज वॉट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर सो दिस इज द मोस्ट सेंसिटिव डायग्नोस्टिक टेस्ट एंड वॉट यू विल सी इन सिंगल फाइबर इलेक्ट्रोमायोग्राफी यू विल सी ब्लॉकिंग एंड जिटर एंड फाइबर डेंसिटी विल बी नॉर्मल सो वेन यू आर गिविंग फर्स्ट एक्शन पोटेंशियल यू कैन सी हियर दैट इज लुकिंग नॉर्मल बट सेकेंड टाइम वेन यू आर गिविंग सेकेंड टाइम वेन यू आर गिविंग स्टिमुलेशन दैट टाइम they will be having jitter so there is a increase jitter you can see increase jitter if you compare here increase jittering will be present in case of myasthenia gravis so this is called single fiber electromyography right then comes the tensilon test tensilon is the adrophonium right so what is tensilon test we will be doing in tensilon test we are going to use this because tensilon is the adrophonium adrophonium is a acetylcholinesterase inhibitor right so basically adrophonium they will inhibit the acetylcholinesterase if acetylcholinesterase is inhibited what will happen acetylcholine will combine with acetylcholine receptor and transmission will be proper right so transmission will be proper so what will happen if you give adrophonium positive test what will happen they will have immediate increase in the strength because they are blocking the acetylcholine esterase so this is what we have to understand when you give adrophonium injection to the patient you check for the muscle strength and in that in case of myasthenia gravis muscle strength will be improved because they have inhibited right but if it is not getting improved that means it is something else we have to think about other things which are responsible for muscle weakness or other reason for muscle weakness so that is the adrophonium test so when you give adrophonium muscle strength will be improved that will be suggestive of myasthenia if it is not getting improved it means it is something else right now coming to the ice pack test so ice pack test is used for ptosis right so you can see that person is having left drooping eyelid we are applying the ice pack and after ice pack it is getting improved so ice pack over eyelid for 2 minutes it will improve the ptosis that is called as ice pack test so tensilon test ice pack test repetitive nerve stimulation and single fiber electromyography these are the four things which we have covered fifth one is immunological assays where we are checking two important antibodies you can see at neuromuscular junction there are two important antibodies and they are interrelated to musk antibodies and ldl receptor protein antibodies musk is a muscle specific kinase antibody and lrp4 is a ldl receptor related protein 4 antibody so these are the two immunological assays so just remember their name which examiner may ask you musk 4 lrp4 muscle specific kinase and ldl receptor related protein you can see they are they are all intertwined to each other muscle specific kinase and and this is ldl receptor protein 4 antibodies which are associated with each other and that will be the important for myasthenia gravis for ocular or cranial myasthenia gravis you will be using ct or mri what will be the treatment of this patient you have to give pyridostigmine which is a acetylcholinesterase inhibitor so as i have shown you when you inhibit acetylcholinesterase acetylcholine can combine with receptor and that will prolong uh, that will give the normal neural transmission right so pyridostigmine will be doing that if person is having thymoma or thymic hyperplasia then thymectomy or surgical thymectomy will be treatment so last you have to remember when you are using adrophonium d adrophonium is for diagnosis right and pyridostigmine will get rid of the symptom so that means it is for the treatment so keep revising this topic for your exam my best wishes to all of you